Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith, and in this video, we'll set up the development environment together. By the end of this video, we'll be able to make Daisy blink using C++. Let's get started. First thing we'll need is Daisy. We can think of it as like an Arduino, but for embedded audio programming. We also need a micro USB cable and a computer. This tutorial is designed for all Mac, Windows, and Linux users. While we have everything in front of us, we might as well connect them together and then put Daisy into bootloader mode. After Daisy is connected to the computer, press and hold boot, and then press and hold reset, and then let go reset, and then let go boot. We have to do this every time we flash or embed a new program into Daisy. But we can actually skip this step by using an SD link, which I'll talk more about later in this video. Perfect, now the rest of the video is pretty much all software. Please go to the Daisy wiki by clicking on the first link in the description below. Our first task is to install the toolchain, which is the set of tools used to bridge Daisy to a firmware. This includes building, flashing, and debugging firmware on the Daisy. Essential tools for your next audio project. Okay, click on the operating system of your choice, download the installer, and follow the installation wizard prompts. For Windows, we also need to install this git, For Linux, the process of installing the toolchain is a bit different, so Windows and Mac users can skip to this timestamp. Install make by copying and pasting the following into your command prompt. Then download and install the GNU embedded toolchain for ARM. If you already have an ARM toolchain, double check the version that you have because the libraries will not compile for the more recent versions. Once downloaded, extract the folder from the tar file and move it to a destination of your choice. For example, developer. Once the file is moved, open up your bash rc file and add the following lines. Then restart your terminal or run this before trying to compile the libraries or the examples. Next, we'll install the dfu util, which is used to program binary files to the daisy via USB. Finally, we'll install the OpenOCD, which is used to program the DAISY and debug via JTAG debug probe. You can run this line to install. Next, we'll clone the DAISY examples into our computer. For Mac, open up Terminal. For Windows, open up Git, which we installed earlier. Simply copy and paste this line, and then hit Enter. Okay, the final major software that we need to install is the Visual Studio Code. We can code in C++ and flash that program into DAISY all within this environment. This link right here will send us to the latest installer on their website. Okay, this part is for Windows users only, so Mac and Linux users can skip to this timestamp. We need to change the default profile to git bash that we installed earlier. First, click on Terminal up here and select New Terminal. This will open a terminal tab in the bottom of our VS Code window. Then, go down to that terminal window and click on the arrow that is next to the plus button right here. In that drop-down menu, click on Select Default Profile, and then up here, choose Git Bash. One final Windows-only step is to reset the USB driver. Click on this Zadig wiki page link right here. Then, click on this link which will take us to the Zadig download page. The download link is right here, so be careful not to click on ads that deceptively say download. We already have Daisy in bootloader mode from earlier, so we can move on to opening up Zadig. Click the options menu and select list all devices. And in the drop down menu right here, select DFU in FS mode. And select Win USB in the target driver box here. Finally, click Replace Driver, or it might say Install Driver like mine does. Just in case, put Daisy into bootloader mode again. Okay, we're finally ready to flash the program into Daisy. We'll start simple here and just make the onboard LED right here blink on and off repeatedly. This is a hello world of embedded programming. In the VS Code, we can open up the Blink Examples folder by clicking File, Open Folder, Desktop, Daisy Examples, Seed, 
and select then open the blank folder. Because this is a new install, we need to build the libraries and the current example. We can do so by launching the command palette with Ctrl-P on Windows and Command-P on Mac OS. And up here, type task build all and hit enter. We need to do this again whenever we upgrade Daisy Examples, Daisy SP, or LibDaisy. Hopefully your Daisy is still connected to the computer and it's put in bootloader mode from earlier. Okay, let's launch the command palette with Ctrl P or Command P and type task build and program DFU and hit enter. This will build the blink code and now the program should be embedded into Daisy. Hopefully our Daisy's onboard LED will start blinking now. Yes, success. If you encounter an issue, don't be discouraged. Please comment below with the description of the error that you see in the terminal and I will be happy to help. Every time we want to flash a new program into Daisy, we need to put Daisy into bootloader mode beforehand. We can actually skip this bootloader step by using the SD link, which you can get from our website. For me personally, it's been super useful. Let's learn how to use it. Plug the connector to SD link in this direction like this. And then we can connect it to Daisy C's headers right here. Make sure the red stripe is facing the opposite of Daisy's USB port like this. And make sure to center it so that there are an even number of pins on either side of the connector. Then we can connect Daisy to the computer the usual way using the onboard USB port. Okay, let's open up VS Code now. In order to flash with ST Link, we need to install the Cortex debug extension. To open up the Extensions tab, click on View up here and then click Extensions. Search for Cortex Debug and find the extension by Maroos25 and install. It should be the top result. To flash a program with the ST link connected to Daisy, we run task build and program instead of the task build and program DFU from earlier. No more pressing the boot and reset buttons. Now that we can flash a program into Daisy, what's next? Well, we are using Daisy after all, so let's get some sound happening. I recommend flashing the oscillator example. I'll go into more detail in the future, but if you're using Daisy Seed, here's how to connect the audio jack. There are a bunch of examples that you can try out and analyze. Of course, you can start writing your very own code as well. I would like to remind you that we do have a forum and Discord. Please feel free to share what you're working on and ask questions. I'll see you there. Finally, you're gonna start seeing more videos on this channel, so I hope you look forward to them. Please do comment below what kind of videos you would like to see. I'll always take requests. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.